The druids gave you the ability to speak with your family, to see them, did they not? Yes, master. It can be connected to any it feels a strong emotion for. So you saw your son. Her heart seemed incapable of enduring more pain, but it did. It continued to beat, continued to enslave her. The slave saw. What did you see? What happened? As exactly as you can remember. She wanted to refuse to answer, but the slave could not. The son of this horrid slave stood with Fenton atop the cliff that looks out onto the ocean. He asked Fenton why, and Fenton answered that he would kill all of Mananan McLear's children as one more torture for Mananan. This slave's son found peace, knowing his father was not dead as we all believe for so many years. As the sword fell, he cursed Fenton. Anyone under Fenton's control is now mocked. The Velman turned, staring at her. Marked in what way? Their hands will show the mark of the bird's eye flower. The Velman sighed. So to find him, I merely have to examine the hands of every being I find to see if they carry a mark. A laugh wanted to come from her lips, but the mouth of the slave remained in its stoic line, unable to show any emotion whatsoever. There are many ways to identify them now, master. The fairies will sense him and will know to stay far from him. Those of other lands can feel his presence as well. Feel his evil. The Veilman nodded. It was a good plan. Fenton had taken control of an old king's guard who was sent to the human realm. The king's guard was banished to the other side years ago, but has been trying to fulfill his mission. Fenton found him and used him to find the ones who can save our world. I was able to stop him for now, but he will succeed in the end. I must know more, Fand. I must know the power you've learned. It was taught to bind both its mind and its abilities to its bloodline. When its children learn to harness that power, they will be the most powerful of us all. When they learn to use it with care... They are nigh on unstoppable. The veilman ran his hand over his eyes. She knows nothing of this world. How can she know the power of her bloodline? Fan's pulse steadied when she realized the veilman was concerned in Quinlan's life. She will not know the extent of her power and will not understand her link to the others. She will be far more dangerous for this. She will not know how to control the power she has been given. The veilman glanced at her, his brows furrowed. I have watched over her for many years and have seen nothing to make me think she will hurt others. Fand wanted to ask questions but could not. She was trained by the druids when she was very young, though since her memories were taken away when she was sent to the human realm, some of that training may have been taken as well, she said, her mind's eyes showing her the ethereal smile on the little girl's beautiful face. The veilman grimaced, though pressed on in his questioning. Fenton's desire to kill Manan and Meglia's children seems rather obsessive. Do you know why this is? Her heart pounded. Fenton once told it how he was treated in his father's house. His father did not love him, and his father's wife treated him as a servant. He was given as tribute to the Fomorian king when he was young. There he was taught to hate to take the magic of others, and to hurt them with it. He blames Mananan Meglia for the way he was treated, and wishes to make Mananan's children suffer in the same way he did. Is Mananan his father? No, master. How is it his fault the way Fenton was treated, then? This slave is bound, master. It cannot speak of these matters. The Velman sighed, leaning forward to rest his head on his hands, do you blame Mananan as well? He asked in a quiet voice. The slave thinks what its master tells it to think. The slave has no thought but how to serve its master, the voice of the slave said. He blew out a long breath. I grow tired of the slave. How can I speak to Fand? When you are joined to the wretched whore, you will know its thoughts. You will feel all it feels and will have its power. 